Hi, I'm Karen Hearn here with Fred Noblock. Welcome to Don't Lecture Me on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Thank you for having me. Now, you're from Mississippi, is that right? I'm from Jackson, yes. And you live in Nashville now? Yes, I've been in Nashville since 83. And you went to Nashville from Mississippi then? No, I moved to Los Angeles and uh, I'd spent some time in Baton Rouge and worked in Atlanta and New Orleans some before moving to LA. I moved to LA in 79 and then moved to Nashville in 83. Okay. So how much has living in Mississippi affected your writing style with music? Well, uh, it was an amazing place to be born in 1953 uh, because I grew up in the middle of the civil rights movement, Vietnam War, voting rights, um, the KKK was prevalent. Uh, the explosion of music and the explosion of recording technology over the span from like 65 until, you know, well now the way we do it is just completely different to how it was when I started. So uh, it's, it was just, it's a, it's a great time to be born. Uh, the music here was varied. My father was from South Louisiana, my mother's from Oklahoma, so he grew up around big band music. They both loved big band music because it was just, that was the pop music of the time. and. Uh, Mom loved uh, Jim Reeves and Eddie Arnold and people like that, so it was a nice mix of um, all different sorts of musics. Uh, we listened to everything. Dad hated country music, but he, but he, he finally came around to kind of liking a few things. But uh, no, wait, he hated country music, hated but your music it. tends to well, it's American primitive. Okay. Okay, let's call it that. Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I, I write a lot of jazz pieces too, so it's not like, not modern jazz, but I mean, it's, it's uh, I'm not a one dimensional, I don't look, think of myself as a country, okay. hard country writer, like honky tonk stuff, but I enjoy it. I mean, there's a lot of people, I just don't do it very well. But um, he, he, mom would watch the uh, Porter Wagner show. She liked that, and wh whichever one, I think Dolly was on that one, but when I was like nine or 10, and so, He'd walk through the living room when it was on TV, <laughs> and he'd go, "Yeah!" You know? <laughs> so he was always making fun of it. But that was, you know, it was all kinds of music. And um, we listened to uh, WOKJ, which was the black station when we were kids. I'm not sure what the call letters are, uh, but 1590. Uh, listened to that a lot. And um, going through just the, the 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 all of the angst. There was all this turmoil on one side, and all this massive growth, joy, um, just political, social, cultural stuff that was going on at the time can only help to make it a richer experience for you musically. Um, and unfortunately, not very much of that shows up in my music, but it all hasn't, just because I'll incorporate things from other musics in, in odd places in a lot of the work that I do. Um, I don't do a lot of recording for sale. I do a lot of demos for songs to pitch, but I'll always take, you know, I'll take a I'll take a wah-wah baritone guitar and put it in the middle of a soft country song if I think it's going to make somebody kind of lean forward and say, what is that? You okay. know? Now, if you could write for anybody, if you could write a song for anybody, dead or alive, who do you think you'd want to write for? Well, alive right now, I'd love to get a Tony Bennett cut. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But I mean, there's hundreds of people that you'd love to have recorded. I'd like to get a Diana Krall cut. I'd like to get another Delbert McClinton cut. I like, I love the way he sings my stuff. Um, I'd like to, to work with uh, that Cat and Coldplay. I'd love to, uh, there's, oh, there's bunches of people. Um, to, uh, the, the list would drop off the, the table. Um, uh, well, so how do you do that? How do you get involved with people like that? Well, it's, that's, I mean, I've known Delbert for, a long time. Uh, our paths crossed years and years ago, and then uh, I met him through Jim. I met him again through Jim Horn, the sax player, um, who was producing a record on him. And he came and says, "Would you like to write some stuff for Delbert?" I said, "Sure." I said, "You know," um, and uh, we got together and wrote a couple of things for his uh, uh, "Room to Breathe" album, and uh, "Never Been Rocked Enough." There's a couple of things on there too. Now I've been very fortunate. I've been blessed. Uh, John Anderson has cut some of my stuff. Uh, Levon Helm sung a song. Uh, Tom Petty's singing with Delbert on one of them. Awesome. So you get, you know, I'd love to write with Tom Petty. That would be great. That would be great fun. I'd love to sit in a room and watch Randy Newman score something. That would be hilarious. Uh, I'd love to work with Herbie Hancock. Writing lyrics for him would be good. Um, 
And you, you recently wrote something for Faith Hill, right, to sing at the, at, uh, the Obama inauguration ball? Well, it was actually a single back in, in 2001. Okay. It was her, a single for her on Warner Brothers called If My Heart Had Wings. And we're watching the returns, and all of a sudden the phone rings, and uh, it's a friend of mine saying, you got to turn on ABC, you got to turn on ABC. And then someone, you hear your call waiting beep in, and it's another friend of mine says, mm -hmm. you got to turn on ABC, you got to turn on ABC. And I says, well, will somebody stop calling me so I can turn on ABC? Okay, and so you didn't know that was going to happen? No, you had just, no idea. Okay. Yeah. That Which must have been exciting. <laughs> well, it was. It was fun because the kids we were watching the election, you know, it's like, hey, this is historic stuff. You know, no matter, no matter who you voted for, this is historic mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, so, you know, come on in and watch this, you know, and it's like then there's... There she is on TV, and she sang the poop out of it. It was great. I mean, you know, it's not an easy song to sing, and uh, she, she was sweet enough to do it, and it's uh, made a big difference in our, our lives. I'd imagine. Fred, would you mind playing a song for us before we go? Mm, not at all. Great. Well, I was going to do it anyway. Absolutely. We can't stop you now, no, right? No, you can't stop me. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for being with us here on Don't Lecture Me for Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Nothing's all you do all day. I'm going to talk about nothing, because nothing's what I want you to say. All I got is nothing after everything you put me through. Yeah, here's a song about nothing. Nothing but nothing is all I ever want from you. A few words about nowhere, because that's where we're headed this time. And you got no business having it. 